So what are like five things that you would do if you were insulin resistant? Number one, build muscle. A, a lot of times insulin resistant resistance comes from simply not having enough muscle tissue on your body because muscle is the most insulin sensitive tissue that the body makes. It is going to be the dumping site for all of that glucose in your diet, and it's going to help you actually metabolize it and use it as fuel. So you have to start building muscle before you even start trying to lose weight. If you are overweight and that's part of the picture, you want to start gaining muscle. And you can do both at the same time, but you want to be in the gym resistant training. Number two, eating enough protein, because that's going to support not only the growth of that muscle, but perhaps the loss of fat at the same time, because you can eat less but still eat enough protein to maintain your muscle mass. Um, Number three, you're going to want to utilize insulin sensitizing herbs. So, or medications, right? That could be metformin if you want to go the Western route. If you want to go the herbal route, that could be something like berberine, right? People, you hear a lot about berberine. That's kind of like a natural metformin. I don't love berberine. I think that there's more effective herbs. For some people, it's great. um, But I see more success with other insulin sensitizing herbs like cinnamon, and ginseng and gentian and fenugreek. Those are some really great ones that not only um, help your cells become more sensitive and aware of insulin, but they also help to increase your body's endogenous GLP-1 levels, which is what Ozempic actually does. So those herbs kind of have a twofold action. Um, You're also going to want to take walks after meals. That's number four. Because any sort, even a 10 minute walk after meals can drastically lower your postprandial glucose spikes, which lowers your inflammation and helps, you know, again, continue to reverse insulin resistance. And another great thing you can do is take um, vinegar before meals. Vinegar has not only been shown to slow the, um, the conversion of starches that you eat in your diet to glucose. So it kind of slows the post meal glucose spike from carbs, but it also helps your cells and muscle. Uh, and muscle tissue utilize glucose from your meals more effectively. Did you make your bitters product because of your insulin resistance experience? Exactly. Okay, so you would use this. You just gave it to me. I just tried it. You would put it in a tea or water before you eat. Yeah. So what I was doing is I was taking the herbs in this formula separately in capsule form. So I was taking a whole bunch of capsule right. capsules like, of all these different herbs. So much work. And I was also taking vinegar before meals because huh. the acetic acid and vinegar, again, is so effective in that twofold manner. Um, so as an herbalist, I was like, we love vinegar tinctures. Herbalists either tincture in alcohol, vinegar, or glycerin, which isn't quite as effective for tincturing. So I was like, I could just tincture all of these herbs and extract their phytochemicals into a base of vinegar. And then all I have to do is take a dropper of that and you get 500 milligrams of the herbs in just one dropper. And you always do it before you eat. Before I eat a carb heavy meal. So if I'm eating, if I'm having like a low carb day, if it's like a rest day for me and I'm not really eating a lot of carbs, I don't need to take it. And um, this is the one that has the same ingredients or similar ingredients as Ozempic. Talk to me about yeah, that. Yeah, I wouldn't say similar ingredients as Ozempic. Yeah, expl- so, <laughs> explain what you mean by that. So Ozempic Things is... going to fly off the shelf now. <laughs> <laughs> Essentially, Ozempic, Wagovi, Manjaro, all of the different brand name drugs have the same active ingredient, which is semaglutide. And semaglutide is a synthetic version of a gut peptide hormone called GLP-1. Now, the beauty of Ozempic and Manjaro and all of these drugs and why they work so well is that this synthetic version not only stimulates our own GLP-1 receptors in a really strong way, but the synthetic version of GLP-1 doesn't degrade quickly the way that our own GLP-1 degrades. So it stays in your system a lot longer. So people who take Ozempic are full all day long, never have food noise, never have cravings, never even think about food because what GLP-1, this gut peptide hormone does is tell you, hey, I'm satisfied, I'm satiated, I'm full, I don't need to seek for anything, we're good, we're not hungry. So people with Ozempic, who take Ozempic, they're not hungry all day long and also what GLP-1 does is it lowers glucagon, it increases insulin release, it lowers postprandial blood glucose, it has all of these beautiful metabolic effects too, right? The, this hormone that we make that is now available in a synthetic form. What herbs can do is stimulate the production of our own GLP-1 to a lesser extent than taking a synthetic version of it, but it still happens. There's still this this effect that you're experiencing. So what people notice when they take glucobitters is that their cravings are less. It's not the zero cravings that Ozempic gives you where you can't even look at food, but their cravings are a lot less and they're able to tolerate, okay, I can have one bite of dessert and be done right there. 